evolution of sound. Beep, beep. What's up, Ninja? So I got a new track to show you guys. This track has been done for about two to three months. It's 95% complete. Hopefully we can finish it today. I'm not using my MacBook, so it's going to be possible to do it without the CPU overblowing. But you can see the CPU is at 23% right now. The file isn't, the project file isn't that big, but the synths going are very CPU intensive. So we're going to talk a little bit about the idea, how it came to live. And the cool thing about this one is like compared to the good live one is that this is an original. So I can really talk from the heart in the sense of how I felt when I was making it and why I did certain things. Now, if you guys like these type of videos, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment below on what you think of the song, you know, what you would have done differently. You know, making music is very subjective, guys, and it's very hard to critique someone's music. The most I can do in critiquing is be very objective on the mix in the sense that, okay, these leads aren't popping out. That's not subjective. That's just something you can hear, and that's a fact. But when it comes to if something is good or bad, then it's subjective, so always have confidence in yourself. If it sounded good to you and you got goosebumps making it, then awesome. Stay true to yourself. I got goosebumps making this. I love this fucking song. I can hear it on repeat, and that says a lot because I've been work. You know, I was working on this for about a week straight, and usually you get tired of a song, but this one is one of those special tracks that I just never get tired of, and I can hear on repeat on my SoundCloud private link. So if you guys are ready, let's get started with this walkthrough, and then we'll talk a little bit about everything. If you guys are ready, let's go.
heard it. Okay, so that's going to be the song, guys. I was going to look over here, but you guys are over there. Um, so pretty much, um, that's going to be the song. There's a couple of things I need to fix. I already heard. Uh, but pretty much, let's talk a little bit about the idea of the song. Um, if I can look at the melody. it came. The idea for the song came from an ARP. I love hearing classical music. And, and literally, like I love like really just emotional stuff. Like That's my style. Like I love emotional stuff. So I think that was what I started with. Let me move this down. In sense of melody, it was. And then I started doing this. You know, and then it started getting like, okay, it sounds really good. Now, how can I make it more? Yeah, so here you guys can see we start at the A sharp. Now it's like. So, one, two. So. And then I started adding melody more to that ARP. Eventually, we get into this where it kind of goes down the, from F to tum tum. And that gives that ARP the very catchy element of this. But then when we play it with the chords, that's where the magic happens because the chords really just make that sound so emotional. Now, here we're going to have a re-space in the break. The re-space is pretty much going to look like... Sound like that. It's pretty much a sound that's just made in serum. It's just two um, super saws filtered, and that's it. Played at very a low octave. We added a sub there just to get it in, and that's it. No effects out of this. Just straight up like that. We just, you know, we added an EQ8 here, and that's it. Um, made it mono, as you guys can see. Now, this is just something I added because I was lazy, to be honest. I wanted to make like a atmospheric type of sound but at the same time you know i was a little bit burned out already this was towards the end of the production and i was like you know what i'm just gonna use the sample but i did try put the reverb here you guys can see i put that at 100 percent so it covers it fully in reverb however without it on it doesn't sound that pleasing but with this dry and wet and a few decay time take off everything in the standard reverb of ableton that's pretty much it and then now here I know I need to add I'm gonna I need to add like a a reverse vocal. It needs to be added to present the vocal a bit better. Now the next thing is gonna be um, the drop is like the chords of the song, which again is gonna go with pretty much the ARP in the sense that we wanna play something that is gonna make the ARP kind of sound a lot more melodic. So pretty much if you guys look at this, the chords are pretty much gonna be I'll oh, play it. So those are the chords of the song, and if I were to play this on the piano, we would go from like, you know, let's say here, there, there, and then I believe it goes down to uh, D sharp, like lower D sharp, so it's the same. You know, but then when we play lower D sharp, we're not playing the, the normal one here. We're just going to play this one up a bit here. So we go from D sharp, A sharp, C sharp, down to A sharp, F sharp, and D sharp. Keep in mind that the chords is the exact same thing as this, almost, but it's just put up so that we go to A sharp, and then we have here just like, it's still harmonic. It's still like a same chord. I consider these the same chord. Like literally, if I wanted, I can just do this and this would sound good. But this is just kind of creating this kind of new element to it. Check this out. You see how that sounds like, right? So what I like to do a lot of the times to make my chords a little bit better is just do that, where I put it up a notch, same chord, and then it sounds like this now. Sounds way better. Um, so I did that for this, and then here, instead of going back up to the D sharp, to start over, I wanted to add like a change to it so it doesn't sound so repetitive. So pretty much here, if we move this D sharp down to the B, which is the the B, 
you know, B is the third, the third back of D sharp. I don't know how you guys in music theory would, would explain it, but B, the third of B is D sharp. So we know that these chords are very similar in harmonics because here you guys can see I'm playing D sharp and F sharp and then here D sharp and F sharp. But this goes up to A sharp because we're playing the root note here is that D sharp, the bottom note of the chord. Um, we move down to the B, but we still have that D and we still have that F sharp. So it makes it sound like we're like similar to that first chord, but it sounds different because of this bottom note, if you guys get my drift. Um, and then from there, everything else is the same. You know... And that's pretty much where the idea comes from. It's just that that um, that arp. Now the next thing is going to be that the re space is just following the bottom notes of the chord here. You know, here we have that re space up here. It's just following the the bottom note of this chord progression. Okay. Um, the next thing is going to be, I think that's going to be it for it. Um, the drums come in and stuff. Um, we'll talk about them in the drop because I made the drums in the drop and I just had them in the break to give a little bit of feeling. The next thing is the vocals. Now, a lot of people ask me what the vocals were, the vocals were from. This is where I was kind of hiding it. I didn't want to give them away because I know a lot of people are going to try and jack the way I have the vocal set. The reason I say this, guys, is because the vocals come, and I'm just going to say it right now, um, they come from... Uh, I think it's Holly Drummond. It's a Black Octopus sound um, sample pack, vocal pack. Um, and the cool thing about it is that it has these um, phrases that you can kind of mix and match. So pretty much it's like you're writing your own song in a way. Um, you're limited to the amount of phrases you can use, obviously. So start of love, open your eyes. I like the idea of that. You know, start of love, open your eyes. Like you're telling someone like, you know, we're falling in love, but you can't see. Um, so that's where that comes from. And then here we have... Um, don't make a sound i need you obviously you're still telling that person like i need you so that's where the vocals are from this is not from a vocal pack like pretty standard i had to make it this way so that's why it's a little bit if you're giving them away but now you guys know where they are now these vocals were set at a bpm of 175 so pretty much what i did is i just warped them and then the cool effect about these vocals is that they sound like this you know without anything like just straight out of the of the sample let me show you how they sound like we'll start with um start of love let's put start of love it's gonna be in here could this be so it sounds like that could this be the start of love so you guys can see there now it goes into this could this be now the way i like to make my vocals and the reason i'm saying this now is because i got tired of doing it this way it's first off i need to make this be in key which is in d sharp so a sharp a minor to d sharp how long how many semitones i would go to the piano and i count the notes okay one two three four five six up so six semitones up now when it gets up it gets pitched the vocal so pretty much we can go from beats a lot of people just leave it here Sounds really bad. So what we do is go into Complex Pro. And, and when you go into Complex Pro, it's like this. this. And I don't like that. So what I do is I lower the formant down to around 21. Envelope at 128 by default. And that's how we come up with that sound. Now, the vocal is going to have CLA, and it has a lot of reverb because in the break, we don't have that much going on. So I was like, I want this vocal to just pop out. Then here we have a, a rack to make the vocal, lift the vocal up in the mix. I told a lot of you guys in the feedback stream, like, you guys need to lift your, lift your vocals. Like, they need to be the center of attention. So one of the ways to do that is you just boost them, you apply EQ, and then you just sidechain. Like, literally, it's just making it louder. Like, that's all you need to do to put them on the top of the mix. And then CLA vocals, we compressed a lot. You know, we reduced in the low. We added spank, which just means the type of compressor was really heavy. Um, reverb chamber, eighth um, delays, and then we spread the vocal. We made it wide. And as you guys can see, if you guys hear the, if you guys hear this little nice, I have it so that it starts to get kind of mono. Right now it's in mono, as you guys can see. It's not fully mono, but it's sort of mono in the center. So, so then when the vocal plays with it, they're not fighting as much. So in here, what I wanted was the vocals, I wanted them to be wide. I wanted them to be the center of attention. If it was house, maybe I'd make it mono. But I wanted them to sound big because, I mean, the vocals are the center of attraction here. They're the center of um, the attention, sorry. And pretty much... We have to make room for everything, guys. And this is something that I told you guys in the feedback streams that a lot of you guys aren't doing is that you need to place everything, okay? 
Um, so my respace is in mono. My respace covers this frequency, the low part. Then my my plux, you guys can see, covers this part of the frequency here, and it's set to mono. So now the sides are open. They're up for grabs. There's nothing on the sides besides this atmospheric thing. So my vocals can shine there. And you know, once you figure out how to do this yourself, it's like the best aha moment because this is how you're gonna get your mixes to sound loud without sounding like you over compressed the shit out of them and it sounds cluttered. Now, the next thing in this is gonna be that, you know, pretty much um, after, you know, we have our melody here, we have our little portion here, which I'm a bit iffy on, literally how this enters. Like, it's either missing an effect or something which I can add here, which could be um, just a sweep or something. So that's one of the things we're going to have to fix, which we're going to do at the end of the video. Fix. Sweep. I'm going to add a sweep there. Um, okay, so once we have that, these kind of sounds come in here, this one. So in this one, I made a video about this on a rack. You know, you make your, you can make your stuff be dry, verb, and then saturated, or you can make, you know, like it to be like wide and mono signal, and then you know make it wider. I tend to do it this way. So my verb is here. So if I solo this, this is all reverb. So the, when I do this, I can easily EQ the reverb, and I made the reverb be really wide on this sound, as you guys can see. I think that's for the sound. No, never mind. That's not for the the reverb. The reverb is here, a hundred percent always and then this is going to act like it's a return um, and then we're going to eq the reverb here which is eq'd and that's it the next thing we're going to have is going to be the saturation of the sound which sounds like this it's like, think of it as another layer now we're going to get rid of this now pretty much this is like another layer and it's going to have um an eq it's gonna have a saturator, simple delay doing the Haas effect to make it wider, a glue compressor, and then an auto filter just for you know purposes of filtering. And then we have a dry signal which sounds like this. And there's nothing on it as you guys can see here. Now remember this is the rack we're looking at. Now the sound is made in massive. It's made using squares. I wanted to make a sound that wasn't very um, how do you say it? Very generic. So the way this sound is made and the, and the way that it makes it unique is that the cool thing about Massive is that you have these wavetables that go from square to saw, um, sine to square and stuff. So I utilized three of those and pretty much what we have happening is pretty much that we have a, a, a performer on the amp so that it opens it up. So as the sound plays, it changes from whatever the left side is, which is a square, square and a sine, to um, a saw, saw, and a square. And that gives us our sound. It gives us that little nice effect in the beginning of the sound. And it just makes it a lot more unique. And there's also white noise here, as you guys can see. Now, the next thing, guys, is going to be pretty much that when this comes in, we also have, you know, just the vocal plane. And this is where it gets a little bit messy, the, the whole thing, if we're not smart about it. So pretty much here, the sound sounds very thin. You can see we did a notch here and that's to let the vocal pop through again it's because like if we solo the this with the vocal It works just because we made room for it. So then when it comes in all together. All right, then the drums come in, which we'll talk about in the drop. And then we have our drop. So pretty much here, this sound we're going to have is right here.
We're just applying the performer so it's like, you know, giving it that, it's like a gate effect, like a trance gate. You could do that with a trance gate. Um, and then um, I did that because I used to make a lot of trance and I thought it would be cool to have it rather than just have chords going vroom or doing that future based shit. Um, so I don't know if this is future based. I don't think it is. I think it's more electronic or something along those lines. But the cool thing about it is that I cannot place it in the genre and it's just me. Like the best way to say it, what genre is this? It's just me. It's what I thought sounded good at the time. Um, so once we're here, you know, we have our drop. We pair the re-space again, but we do it with the sub. So then the sub is set to mono, and then here we're controlling the sub. Again, I've shown you guys this before in the Good Life one. We're just controlling the sub so that it sounds good, and this is how it sounds like. Okay, in the sub, we have warm-up lows. Again, it's an amazing preset. Just make sure to move the width down all the way. I put the dry and wet at 100% too. We added a compressor to control those peaks, a limiter again, and then we have a, a side chain and then EQ at the end to get rid of the clicky sound the side chain's gonna give us. Because you can hear this kind of like a click, right? If we move this over here, you can hear that click. So pretty much that's why I have it like this. You can barely hear it now. Now the next thing is gonna be the drop again. You know, it's just the same thing, but it's side-chained heavily. And the only thing that changes on it is gonna be that. Now let's get rid of the solo because it's in solo. All right, there you go. And then on the drop, we're gonna have this kick, which I think it's either from Echo Soundworks or Cymatics. I'm not sure. We're about to find out. Who knows? But it's kick number three. I was using this stuff on it, but it didn't even make any um, difference. I just put the kick in mono to make sure it's in mono. Some sample, some sample cap. Uh, sorry, some sample pack companies don't put them in mono, so it's kind of like okay, you gotta put it in mono. Okay, now the next thing that we have are the drums and the kick, which you know the drums are gonna be here. Now the drums again, uh, the snare obviously comes from, I believe it's gonna be um, Death Snare, it's either Cymatics or Echo Soundworks. They're my favorite companies for future bass dubstep stuff, period. Um, and I utilize their drums because they're very sick. Um, they're high quality stuff, even though Cymatics does tend to overmarket, as you guys say, um, their stuff is top notch. Now uh, here we're gonna have this Perks, and I only used a couple of them. We have this one that I really like. Sample guys, I think. That's the sample with the reverb, right? Because I didn't put that much reverb on it on this shit, I think. Yeah, it's just a sample. And then we have this one hitting. And I make my own drum loops now, so. I did this kind of variation to it, as you guys can see, to kind of give the, the hats a little bit of like. And then the next thing is just a snare. It's just making sure it's kind of more in the center, as you guys can see here. And it's panned to the left by six. Uh, sorry, by right to the right by six and the and the drums to the left now what this does is a very cool thing where it's like you hear the drums you know the the hi-hats and stuff on the left and the snare on the right and it opens up your mix because to be honest if i had this at six like both of these in the middle you know it sounds good because i think um the the hats are very wide but however this is the way i like it more Here you go, so, and then the snare here. Again, we're just making room for the drums. The drums also have to be placed. Now, once we have that, we're pretty much done there with the drums. Now, the next thing is going to be on this. It's just going to be there's a cymbal on the drop and an exhaust, a cashmere exhaust, which is my favorite downlifter. <laughs> Here's just the vocal, have some sweeps. Now here we have the, you know, let me see what this is. Yeah, we have that plug coming back in. However, it's not fully in because I didn't want to give it away because we're going to use it in the bridge here, but you can already hear it coming in. Now here the plug, if you can see the width of it, it's going to get automated to turn stereo here. Um, and this is how it sounds like, you know, coming in. We need to fix this. Um, just don't like the way it just sounds like all the way through, so we need to just fix that. There we go. 
Now, the next thing is we're going to have a bridge. Again, in Good Life, we had a bridge, and I have a bridge in all my songs where there's vocals. I feel like it makes the transition a lot more like, okay, it makes sense more melodically and more for poppy music in a way. And also, notice how I'm keeping the same theme throughout the song. It's like I had the pluck and I didn't have it on the drop because if I had the pluck playing the whole way through, every time it comes back in, people aren't going to be like, God damn it, get rid of that fucking pluck already. So I could have had the pluck on the drop, but I chose not to because now I can use it here to change up the elements of the song. It's still the same idea because the pluck is just playing almost the chords. <laughs> Now here we have these arps, and they're just really just panning from left to right, like so, and that's it, they're just there, I think they're made in massive as well, it's just made by using an elephone to the pitch, it gives you the telephone effect, that's it. Um, then we have the reese bass, now the arps were added just to add variation to it, because if we just had this. See, it, it's like, uh, okay, there's too much plain here, so we need to add something ear candy. Think of it as like a deck. Now, here is where I kind of wanted to create this cool effect. It like instantly popped in my head. I was like, it needs to happen. So here, literally all I did is duplicate it here and made sure that it was in key. And then here you guys can see I turned it, I just consolidated it together and I made it go in keys, three semitones up to go with the bass because if I just leave it at this. I mean, it still works, but it's not melodic and I don't think you want to hear that till we get to this part here where it repeats as well. Goes down, negative four, negative five. Now, I've been doing this in trance. It's like a little th thing I do myself. I don't know if anyone else does it, but I like to um, just have this like sound, the drop sound. Like if it's chords, I like to have them coming just filtered in like. Like it's kind of like, like you fucking punch someone. And it just gives, makes the drop sound a lot more cooler in my opinion. It's just a little technique I do myself and everything. <laughs> Instead of having that lame ass fill everyone has, I just, uh, this is what I do for my stuff. One last time. Now here on the second drop, the plucks now are playing in the fucking drop. This is the climax. Everything's playing. Everything's harmon har harmonizing each other. Harmonics all over the place. And you can see the fucking, um, the plucks are stereo. Now, I should make them mono, to be honest, as you can see over here. So we're going to make them fucking mono. And then finally in the outro, I wanted to have like an ending where it was very acoustic. I, I don't imagine anyone playing this at a club. I just wanted to make this to hear when I'm going to the beach or when I'm just chilling. Um, so in the end, I just added this piano, playing the chords.
it's over. And then the and then the vocal, like from the phrases, there's another one that's called I need you or something, and it just gives it that nice I need. Damn it. <laughs> Wait up. I need you. And that's pretty much it. So that's the whole song, guys. Now let's fix the stuff that I said we needed to fix. Now there's also a part here where it was like this is this is very sudden, I know. But the thing about it, guys, is is that I had this kind of different um version of the song where this was fucking longer. Literally, this was all uh 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 and I had to cut it out. I thought it was too long to get to the second drop. So I cut it out. I'll show you guys what I mean in the in um it's in my SoundCloud, so let's see if I can get it up. Um, I'll show you guys what I mean real fast. Like, it took forever to get to the, yeah. Um, so we're going to go here, profile. It's a lot of songs. It's right here, I think. Check how it lasts longer. That's how it used to sound, now it sounds like this. Like instead of going into that kiddo kick pattern kind of break um, thing, we go instantly into this drop because we already took like this, all of this to get into this second drop. And also the drop sounds a lot cleaner. <laughs> Now, I can make this peak at negative four. I don't want to, though, because it's not a track that you're going to be bumping to blow speakers. It's more of a chill track, so no need to per, um, get rid of dynamics. Okay, so, um, or limited more. Okay, so let's fix the problems we had. We need a reverse vocal here, which I think we can find by just going into the sample pack of the vocal. I'm sure she provided that, or um, Black Octopus did. I'm sure there's, like, vocal swells or something. Yeah, you can see it's there. Maybe. So let's find the key of D sharp. I don't even think that's going to work, but we'll try it. It's a vocal swell chord. We just need the note. So it's up here. I'm so stupid, guys. So you can see it happen there. Let's let's move it here. You know what, I think it'll be fine. Let's add a bit of reverb to that though. Um, let's put the vocal reverse up here. And let's put it, yeah, see. Now we need to put this up at 12 octave because again, the vocal is not where it needs to be. Um, in fact, it was an A chord. So you know what, let's just do exactly the same thing we did so that it sounds right um, because I want it to sound as right as possible. So plus six. Complex Pro, we're gonna go with 21. There you go. This Sounds exactly how it needs to now. I think it can even sound cooler if we add our own reverb in there because to be honest, um, the cool thing about doing a reverb on the channel for effects is that it does sound a lot cleaner. In the sense that the reverb just sounds a lot more natural.
All right, so we need a sweep here. We can easily use the reverb sweep, but we're gonna kind of use another one as well. Go with something like this. Um, we just need to make it end like that. So I have a blur ears, by the way. Yeah, I don't like it. We're also missing the crash, the cinematics crash from here. We're gonna add it here. To make our life easier, we're just gonna get the same vocal shot that we had here and we're gonna put it over here. It just makes sense to do it. Get rid of that, and there's something going on here that's kind of bad. Okay, we need to cut out the re space, and it can't be there. Let's add this vocal here as well to kind of transition it a lot better. We're going to add this one here as well. We are done with it. All right, guys. So, um, you know what? We can add the cash right here. Boom. That needs to be there. And I guess here as well. Okay, guys. So this is the final product. I'm going to leave it at this. Um, you know, if there's a little bit of flaws, it doesn't matter. Um, a lot of the times people are, you know, you're going to try and perfect it to the max. Don't try. Um, I mean, you do, you should try, but at the same time, you know, it's like, okay, it's, it's like little ass things where it's like, you're the only one that can pick it up because you've been hearing it for so long already. Then, then don't try to fix it. I mean, sometimes even then, you know, you're like, it sounds a little bit muddy. Sometimes a little bit muddy is good because it sounds a lot more warmer. <laughs> now let's talk about the last thing which is the master um in the master i just have an eq3 and reverb that i talked about in the last video which is just used to kind of automate the the low end out of the buildup and make it sound stronger on the drop something that you guys need to work on as well not all of you guys um multi-band compression it's going to be the preset and then you just adjust to your pleasing and then a fat filter pro l to just push everything at default setting for this one that loudness like house and then we're peaking at negative six, negative five, which is where I really like it. And that's where it's going to remain because I don't want to make negative four where it sounds really squished and not pleasing like I want it. Anyways, guys, if you guys want to download this track, make sure to leave a like on the this video and on the track on SoundCloud. I'll make sure to put it in the description. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave a comment if you want more like this. And hopefully you guys have an amazing day. Feedback stream tomorrow at 2 p.m. So I'll be checking out your track some more. And I'll see you guys next time. And just take care and have an amazing day.